Good day and welcome to Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM and of course on the Joy Prime channel. I'm Louis Kwame Sechama, you can call me Lexus Bill and as always I look forward to these conversations because we get to celebrate people who are doing amazing things here for the motherland. And today I have one very amazing conversation for you. One that you would love to listen to. So I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'd rather you take a seat, grab a drink, turn up the volume a little bit because you'd love to hear my guest today. Yes, today we paid a visit to our landlord. Yeah, <laughs> you're wondering who? Well, Dr. Kelvin Nee Taki. Uh, yeah, probably wondering who he is. He's a very prosperous entrepreneur. I had a very wonderful business life. And you're probably puzzled still who he is. Well, he's our landlord. Look, for many years, Accra had been without a king. But in 2020, the Jasiche swore in Dr. Kelvin Nitaki Abia as the Ga Manche, the king of the Ga traditional area. So far, his oversight over the kingdom has been amazing. It can be best described as transformative. He's been a symbol of unity, and just like he illustrated in his uh, speech at his induction, a broomstick can easily be broken, and it cannot sweep. But if you have a bunch of them together, it's hard to break them, and they sweep better. Today, we get to learn about his journey to being the king of the land that we call home. King Taki Teku Churu II. The Ga Manche is my guest on Personality Profile. Ni Manche, thank you so much for having us in a, one of your beautiful palaces. Mm. How are you? Yo, Juba. But then, of course, I need to say, we are not a child of you. I can't name me. 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 I can um eko fita e ona onu onu eko ke fita ahe ai ai guys i should have taken my gun lesson seriously <laughs> <laughs> what, what what was that what did you say she boy your girl come ka ke come e bo le eh mi ye come o small come mi small come ke the fair be ni o ba ye come as an okay ke she o ba we ga we mo come o ba ka se come okay Fit and no lay a gagwene, a chain cra, or by no way gagwene. Okay. And Garuma, why? She, if you can't get your tall make a rumor. Now, see Miracle laughing at me. I see. Yo, why are you tomorrow? Anyway, thank you so much for having us uh, in your palace today. Yeah. How, how are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. I am. Um, Fine, I'm fit for purpose. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, I've, uh, since my installation, I started working. Yeah, to try to congregate our matter, and um, now I see it. You know, uh, there are baby together. steps. Yeah, there are baby steps, but it's work in progress. Yeah, I have tunnel vision. I want to get the gas state somewhere. Yeah. And I believe that we cannot do that without reinforcing the support mm. for the girl child. Absolutely. You train up a man child, you train up an individual, mm. you train a girl child and you train up a nation. And I believe that that is why I'm surrounded by them today. Yes, I mean, it's quite symbolic actually. Uh, I was actually going to ask you what the essence is. Uh, they're all carrying pots with fire and there's a, a bit of smoke going around what's the symbolic uh, what what does it stand for machu as it's called is um from the palm tree okay and its essence is absolutely to cast away spells mm. and um, evil spirits so basically it creates um an environment yeah where you could have um, good meaningful spirits attend a presence or attend an occasion oh. and this occasion is that prime because it's on joy prime absolutely I see. <laughs> no I, I like see. that um, I hope the 
even as it casts the spells away and I go, it will keep, you know, <laughs> casting the spells away. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it anyway. brings good luck, yeah. basically. We say it ensures our manually. That's mm. basically what it does, yes. And keeps us clean. Okay. Just like the nyanya and the hesop that right. we use most of the time, yes. Okay. So it's been, what, four years and more? 2017, I was installed as government chair. And 2021, I was recognized by statute mm. and started working officially at the Ghana Traditional Council as its president. Mm. Since I came, I have found a need that until we unite, there is nothing that can happen. And to unite, we need to um, support and empower our institutions that make up the Gamanche stew. So I have elevated the paramountcy from the division of Sempe to paramountcy. Mm. I have elevated the division of Bese to paramountcy. I have elevated the division of Asne to paramountcy, of Abola to paramountcy, of Akamaji to paramountcy, of Otublohun to paramountcy. My predecessor elevated Osu to paramountcy. La to Paramountcy, Teshi to Paramountcy, Nungwa to Paramountcy, and Tema to Paramountcy, Ngleshi to Paramountcy. That's Nia Mugisose the second. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah. Why did you see the need for this action? It was, like I said, to strengthen the institutions around the government just too, because until these institutions are strengthened. Obama said something, that what Africa needs are not strong men, but strong institutions. And I, I, side, I side with that. I believe that the institution of chieftaincy, of course, has its pinnacle as chiefs, um, head as chiefs. And from chiefs, we have the institution of queen mothers, mm. which is headed by the Gamanye. And then we have the institution of Wawoya Woye, who are priests, and one cheme. Yeah. And then we have the Agbanfu Acheme and Agbanfu Anyeme. In Ashanti, we say this is the Sumankwa uh, Hene right. and Sumankwa Hene Bosum. Okay. All the deities, all the gods that the Sumankwa Hene presides over. And then that's, that's, that's how we. we, we, we um, so that. And then we have the Asafu Acheme. Mm. Asafu Anyeme with also another institution, you know, of our military wing, you know, they lead the charge if it comes to war or battle. And for a personality like Asafuache Mankata, I mean, I cannot move without him mm. leading the charge. Anywhere I go to, he has to be in the front of the charge. When we went to Kumase, yeah. you saw that there was this gentleman with this strange heart. Mm. And uh, it always, this heart always attracts a lot of attention, yeah. you know, because it's re-fortified and um, empowered. So he leads the charge. And then we have one institution, which is the Wulomoy. Now, the Wulomoy strengthen our spiritual realm. They are heads of institutions of our spirituality as the Ga people. They create the spiritual aura. They create the tradition its norms and its usages. So if you see us, okay, one bashing, one duma, one fangma, one shwe udada no wo, ake game, one one jikpele, one jokpele, one shekpele, shemoin, one lakpele, alalai, one chunkpele, kusun, one one mu mana, it's all with the Wulamoy. They set the pace. So, these institutions, in Ghana, you say these institutions are branches, alogbinei. 
these branches, these institutions must be strengthened. So these are these institutions must be strengthened. Once they are strengthened, we would have the authority of the government or any chief in the Ghana state, you know, complete. Is this, is this your ultimate goal as the government chair, where you see chieftaincy play a lot more role in development and in, you know, administering our communities for development? Yes, um, I, I, I believe that there are, there are two things that I'm going to talk about. The, the influence of chieftaincy in our community. Mm -hmm. That I believe that in this day and age, the chieftaincy must transform to just sitting and giving instruction f to a level where the chief moves to the point and makes sure that that instruction is also carried out. Mm -hmm. And you can see us right now, especially we're putting in the Gamancha Foundation and its tenants. And um, with our endowments, our support systems for the Gargel Child Project, um, for the ICT project. Right now we are bringing in an investor that is um, building an innovation, going to build an innovation center in Accra for cognitive AI training of 5,000 youth and all that from our ICT mm -hmm. deliberation and program. We also have um, the scholarship of Gadangbe students, um, needy but um, and brilliant students. And then we have the environment, the sanitation, and then also, so I believe that um, a chief must be interested in his community and must lead to socioeconomic development. Recently, we had to make a few tours around the world and we found ourselves in Utah with the uh, Latter-day Saints Church. We were given funding and now if you come to Adabraka and you see the Manchetaki School, we've broken up the school, broken down the school, built structures, built an ICT block, built a library, building kindergarten, um, um, we're building a dining hall, building toilet facilities, and on the 13th of June, we will be um, inaugurating the school. We've done an astro -tef for them to play football and other games in the school, and all that, you know, to the credit of our chief, yeah. or a king, who is interested in his community. Yeah. Basically, I believe that chiefs also for now need the backing of the chieftaincy act because when you're recognized by statute and you become a creature of that statute it means that you're guided by its laws and if you are guided by its laws it means that these are the laws that empowers you and gives you the needed support and authority legally and I believe that the Article 63 of the Chieftaincy Act must be looked at again so that it's given the full and maximum support for it to be active. Because if you have people holding themselves and styling themselves as chiefs and they can just walk around, that would bring the authority of any chief to distribute. You understand what I mean? But these are things that I believe that if the National House of Chiefs, the Regional House of Chiefs, all chiefs in Ghana are able to table this to the fore okay. with a, a Minister of Chieftaincy to make sure that Article 63 of the Chieftaincy Act is heightened and given the necessary push that it deserves. It will give chiefs the bite and the authority to be able to contribute more socioeconomically to our communities and to Ghana as a whole. Do you think the powers of like chiefs like you have been usurped by politicians. Um, oftentimes when you're looking at the communal development, we are pointing at the member of parliament, we are uh, pointing at the district assembly and elected officials and whatnot. 
do you think politics has overtaken the primary role of uh, uh, chiefs? Because many years ago, chiefs really were responsible for social development, for the, what happens in the communities. But these powers seem to have been usurped. I believe more that we can put it in this way, or in these words, that it's a shared responsibility and a shared effort. Basically, there's a line of politics mm. and there's a line of a chief. I think that we must cooperate to do the work the way it has to be to make it more effective. Mm. If you saw recently um, on Friday, the Minister of Sanitation and its the head deputy, the minister, the new regional minister, the mayor of Accra, the minister of gender, were all in the Gamanche Palace in my palace and we made it sure and clear to them that there cannot be any meaningful um, development in Accra without the traditional authority. We understood each other and now we have formed the platform for cleanliness in Accra. Mm -hmm. We have a six months program starting from um, events preceding the Homo War where we, we are taking cleaning of Accra to a different level. Mm. If we say Accra must be the cleanest city in Africa, then we need to do much more of the waste management effort. This is being supported heavily by Zoom Lion with about 75, 75 trucks within the central business district and the suburbs. Akuchi, I mean, and the chiefs have been mandated to use us of to raise tax forces within each community to regulate how people I mean, use and dispose of waste. You understand? But I think that the Metropolitan Authority should do more. There should be a, a strategy in place that must be implemented, you know, short term, mid term, and long term. Accra is producing so much waste now. Why? Because in every state in the advanced country, what has happened is that the isolated city state of waste management is used. It's only in Ghana and in some parts of Africa that you see that you bring all the waste to the city center and then pay at a heavy cost labor to take it out, mm. take out the refuse, take out or revenue it. But more importantly, in other states, bulk breaking centers are set on the outskirts of the city. That's one. Number two, packaging centers are built just by the bulk breaking centers so that just at that place, waste and everything like that is separated, is sorted. Most of the produce that has to come into the city center are in paper bags or biodegradable plastics. And you know the menace that plastics are creating for us especially in this capital. They are everywhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, they have become a huge problem for the state. If we do not think about these innovative measures of how people are using um, um, recycling waste, having um, color-coded bins where there is education on waste management, having waste receptacles at different junctions so that people can just empty waste there, you understand what I mean? Having trucks move so that they can pick up waste, you know, at people's beck and call. We will have a menace. And what does dirt and waste bring? Mm -hmm. Communicable diseases, diseases we cannot control. So I believe that actively chiefs, as a chief, you must be involved in the welfare, in the health, in your sanitation, and how your people live their lives. Because if you do not take care of that and your people are unwell, yeah. how would you be able to govern and rule them even better? Mm -hmm. You need the wellness of the state to stay as king. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I, I like how you're not just concerned about your state as well, because yeah. I've seen your campaign for peaceful elections uh, this December also going on. So you're even more, you're in the thick of it. 
not just for the gun state but also for the nation as well we will talk about that but i'm just curious seeing the amount of work involved and seeing that all that you're doing did you envision this is what it will be like as the king before you got in Being Gamanche was very far away from my line of, oh. of thought and and even if I wanted to be a leader, I never thought that I would be um, blessed and honored and have the privilege to serve my people in this capacity. The truth be told, um, my conception was guided by hands like um, the prophet Bra Lawson, who started the Lord is their temple, and then now is a divine healer's church. Because my mother, Afu Lawson, Stella Afu Lawson, um, was a daughter of Nilante Lawson, and um, they served the church, the Lord is their temple, all their lives. They were at the high table of the church and everything met my father from Nite Kuchurue, Niyama, and um, they were in Germany for a while, and Darmstadt, my father did a first degree in art and architecture, oh, okay. and then was given a scholarship to King's College in Cambridge to study a PhD in architecture. Um, before I was born, my, father, my mother had lost two issues mm. because she did disobey the prophecy that I had to come, she had to come to Ghana because the child in her had to be born on this ground. And um, she, on the third issue, which was me, had to fly by British Caledonia to Ghana. And um, so they met in, yes, yes in, in the states in germany in germany and came to uk the the, the, the cambridge together in, okay now when i was born the whole me as a baby being born and everything like that uh back uh in gao back bralos and lenny a jimmy king mcbono me it can be chon to cho b you know we have um a right ceremony mm -hmm. for birth and all that. So um, Aldorin of yeah. a child. And it's a very integral part of our Ghana custom um, and norm and usage. So um, when he had done that, he said, I found a fallen, a bear, but true, me too, more will look cool. Can hang guy, what are for? Be near, and look quite, you know. Six months later, my mother flew back and we stayed in England for a very long time until my father, the four years of his PhD. My father had to leave us in England and come to Ghana because, and come to Accra because his PhD and thesis was on the urban design of uh, Central Business District of Accra. So I have certified drawings of the drainage systems of Accra certified drawings of all the sewage systems that were developed by the Israeli engineers by Nkrumah brought in to build all that. Wow. You know, through the Buzia toilets and everything like that. I have certified drawings on all that. And when these things had happened, you know, um, one would say the moment my father finished his PhD, mm -hmm. he applied to tech to the Department of Architecture, and he was there as a senior lecturer. Um, later on, he became head of department, and then also the dean of architecture. May his soul rest in peace. But like I'm saying, he did one thing that was very, very, very important to my, um, my dispensation now, because if my mother had not taught me Ga, at home, or had not spoken Ga with us. We lived in Kumase for about 25 to 30 years. Really? The only time I got to come to Accra 
was when I was traveling out of the country. I see. And even when I came, any time I got into Accra, that same day I would go by domestic flight or STC to Kumasi. There was nothing that held me to Accra. There was nothing weren't taking home, just that they taught us Ga at home. We learned some of the customs at home, yeah. but we were never part of Accra. The only time I got to come to Accra was when I did my national service, and I was posted to GBC. Okay. So at GBC, I was at the audience research department, and my head of department was Victor Lutrot. And the, the audience research department for any media institution is about the most important. It's very important in Deutsche Vela, in yeah. CNN, BBC, all the media networks you can think about. And I believe that it's still very relevant it's now. It's still very relevant now, actually. So what it really does is that it sends us out there to look for um, views and opinions randomly. So we'll go to circles, set up in circles with a questionnaire, start asking questions on presenters, on, um, on um, programs. views, programs, yeah. all that, you know, on documentaries and all that. And um, so then it took me to most of the suburbs in Accra. Oh, I can be in a book home, I can be a snenny, be a naka osu, be a naka la, be a neteshi, can he, you know, just um, looking for people's opinion and people's views on our events. And we build a whole, we build data and um, a whole, um, what do you call it, process of drawing graphs mm. on each and every item that is posted you know at post-production on tv you understand each and every one of it from there audience research mark mark dodo um took me dr mark dodo sent me to tv and <laughs> um, put me into the hands of alexa wulu isaac Addington, mama Oye, and then i had the opportunity of being trained you know because then they thought that I could also be a presenter oh, wow. for TV. And his words were that I was very photogenic. I don't know what that means up to now. <laughs> but, well. Are you sure you don't? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yes. I see. So it was the, the work as a, an audience research executive that probably opened Accra up to you. To me, yes. I, I for could you to know the Accra. suburbs and yes. know the, the land of yeah. Accra well. Yes, so it was never in my line of question that I would be interested in Accra or yeah. be even in Accra. My whole business and my setup has always been in Kumasi. I have a business in Kumasi that controls a lot of interest in cleaning and maintenance all over Kumasi, in Obuase, in Techiman, in Sunyane. You know, we have working staff in Ho and other places. I see. Recently, we had to open an office in Accra because I came to Accra. And then also, <laughs> we have it in Tema also. Yeah. So, uh, it, is, is this, I'm, I, I was going to ask a bit later, but is this why I see a seeming very fluid relationship between you and Asante Hene? Apparently, um, when I was in Kumase, uh, it was my father who was, working with Manshia. My father did a lot of development projects in, in, in Manshia with the um, um, former Asantehene Opukuware II. Okay. And then the current occupant of the Ashanti Stu, um, Osei II, uh, my relationship with him started when he was giving me a strategic management MBA certificate. Okay. So it was reported in the news then that two royals meet. <laughs> that was the first time I had met with him because he's the chancellor of the tech and yeah. from the business school he had come at our congregation and um, as a graduate of MBA, he gave me my certificate. Uh. And then we 
we, I graduated into being a consultant after that. So I was hired um, by Tokiwa to represent the company as a consultant on the KGTA project. Okay. My father designed the um, project, the market, KGTA market project. So I was a consultant on the site of the market. And then we grew from there, yeah. you know. But it has been um, Kumase and me. I, I know every part of Kumase. Yeah. And he knowing that I have a base in Kumase makes it easier for us, you know, to collaborate on, you know. The yeah. same. But he also had an upbringing in Accra. I mean, he had lived in Dansuman, he had lived in, he had lived in Abilingpe also, mm. you know, and he was very close to Niamogi. He had a steady relationship with Niamogi. When Niamogi was even not well, he visited him in the hospital and everything like that. So, and he was also a very good friend of Kintaki Tayo the Third, um, Dr. Joe Blankson, may his soul rest in peace. Um, he had decided, I think, that a relationship with a Gamanche was eminent because our peoples have created a certain kind of enmity. You know, if you see how they talk to each other on social media and, you know, the kind of relationship. And when I began to understand that, I also took it as a mantra that we will make peace with Ashanti at all costs. Right no matter what. That is my devotion to his birthday and then also to the Akwesidae this year. Yeah. Because I said that this must stop. If we want to unite a state, it must begin from our kitchen. It must begin from our home. Charity begins at home. And I believe that if we as chiefs would want to influence and talk about peace in the whole nation of Ghana. It must begin from our homes. Okay. And then also it must begin between us, among us. And Otunfo is a worthy ally. Yeah, I, I saw videos of you at the Akwesidae and the, his 25th anniversary celebrations and it looked like you both were sharing some very good word. I mean, I'm, I would have asked what he was telling you, but <laughs> I know you guys have very interesting conversations between yourselves. But uh, it was quite evident that there was a very cordial relationship between the two of you and it was commendable. I mean, I saw, I saw commentary about it, people talking about how it's a beautiful gesture. And I think that that has been explained by what you said about you. And what he has decided to do with this gesture is that next week by this time he'll be in Accra. Okay. Yes. On the 9th of this particular month, mm. Otun 4 will be here and he'll even be in this house also. Oh, he's coming here? Yes. To see you? To pay his, um, should I say respect and honor? Yeah. I mean... To show his appreciation is a better word. Yes. A better word to show his appreciation to his little brother or yeah. his younger brother. That's oh. basically what it is. You see, the hypocrisy, it's too much in this country. We claim to love our state. We claim to love Ghana. We claim to be patriotic. And yet, we cannot tolerate each other. And yet, we cannot find reason you understand, mm. to have communication with each other. We cannot find the coercion. We cannot decide that these things are petty. Mm. These things are minor. These things can be um, overlooked. Let us think about the things that unite us more than the little things that divides us. You understand what I mean? Right. You are so and so, and so what? More importantly, what we must value is human life mm -hmm. and the value we place on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that he and I have been able to establish a certain kind of relationship, honor for each other's tradition in such a way as never done. And I, 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 I thank the support of all the chiefs, queen mothers, and all, even these girls who 
went with me to Kumasi mm. to grace that occasion. And I think that honor is served. Yeah. And that's for me, you know, another fate, yes. you know, yeah. in my whole journey, you know, to making Accra work again, to making the Ghan state live again, to making the Dangbe flourish. Yes. And we can also say it's an ode to the city which raised you. Yes. Because you spent most part of your early life in Kumasi. Yes. And you schooled at KNUSC as well. Yes. A little bit told me that you are also a fellow. Yes, I charge. Absolutely. Fellow! <laughs> <laughs> charge. I see. Yeah. You, you Katanga, went to KNUSC. You know, yes, Katanga, yeah. Katanga is a, a, is a great, it's a greatest hall. Yes. I know the vandals would start talking about, <laughs> you know, Katanga has you know, a peculiar descent. We we are special. Yes, that is a kind I of, totally you know. agree. Rest not. We rest. We, not. we rest not. The only university yes. within a university. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. We the rest university not. Hall here, yes. In fact, that that adage has pushed me on. You know, mm. since I started this journey, that I rest not. Oh okay. I have to make sure that I ensure the rights of children mm. in Accra. Your rights to an education, mm. your rights to live, your rights to a clean environment, your rights to being, being able to be in an environment where they can compete both locally and internationally with their compatriots and to bring out their innate talents the best way I can. That's why we have programs under the Gamancha Foundation, King Cabronia. On the 1st of every January, we feed over 10,000 children in Bukom you know, with starter parks, school starter parks and all that. And then apart from that, we introduced them to games that they might never have witnessed if I hadn't come into this equation because um, springboards and um, trampolines and bouncy castles and everything like that are thought to be for the uh, most privileged. Right. You understand what I mean? But this comes into the community and the child has a whole day's experience you know, with very, these play games. Very and wonderful it's, it's, initiatives. Uh, yes, very, very yeah. wonderful initiatives. We have scholarships also, you know, s supported by some of the um, partners we have in some of the institutions. Mm. Uh, most of the institutions in Accra have not been very forthcoming with help, you know, and especially the social, uh, corporate social responsibility to the, to the Ghana state. Uh, most of them have also taken us for granted, really. I have development partners, you know, um, outside this country, and we are setting up an office here. And most, most of the events that we do are sponsored by these financiers, you know. Whilst we have our local, you know, corporate organizations, shy of, or multinational, shy of, they make so many millions of dollars from our soils, and yet, this is what we get. But I believe that it is not in the complaining of it. It's not even the talking about it. This year, we are making a step to have a relationship with every CEO on this land, to let them understand that corporately, we must build trust and a relationship. If we prosper, you prosper more. Mm -hmm. And that is what is the message that we want to pass out now okay. to Good them. Sir. I'll take you back to KNUSD for a little bit yes. because I'm curious. Your father was the head of department, of architecture. The, the architectural department. And later in life, you will be a consultant on one of his architectural projects. Yes. But you didn't study architecture. No. What did you study? Painting and graphic design. Oh, you're in the College of Arts. Yes, in the College of Arts. So I had my first degree there. And I paint. You should see some of my paintings. You do? You yes. should show me some. My paintings cost between 3000 to $10,000 a piece. Oh, wow. And I think that one of these days I should be holding an exhibition in we New, need to, in New we York need to or put an exhibition. in Lisbon or something like that. No, let's like start that. from here. <laughs> fact, what I would do is that I would send you some of my paintings so that you okay. show them. Yes, Paintings yes. that I did in um, 98. Wow. If you see them now, you would even ask, wow, that's, that's about it. So I, I think we should have a, the Gamanche exhibition. 
Yes, we should. Sure. Art exhibition. So you can put it people together. like um, um, a bloody Glover, Doctor Bloody, yes. Professor Bloody Glover, and others are my mentors. Wow. Ato De La Key yeah. and everything you know, the uh, De Graf Johnson mm. and all these people are my um, lecturers and then also my mentors. Wow. You know. No, then we need to art. we need to see you a bit more in the arts fraternity now. Oh, yes. I think there's a charge for you to host an exhibition and probably invite uh, some of your friends, you know, the chiefs. Yes. Come and buy pieces and put in their palace. Yes. I think that would be a very iconic thing to do. Don't you think so? Recently, I was in an exhibition in Minnesota, in the U.S., and I saw the different art forms that yeah. currently and contemporarily they're uh, making, and it's amazing. Yeah what is being done now with creative art. And I believe that we have to incorporate that mm. to the youth. There's a lot of unemployment in Ghana. And I believe that um, if we are building entrepreneurial skill, it should also be coined to meet with creativity. Right. The arts. You should see these children when you, you, you see them dance at King Cambronia. The kind of talent that a Ghana child has is absolutely amazing, you know. And I believe that we have to tap these talents. It's work in progress. Yeah. It's too much, it's a lot, but I believe yeah. that with the cooperation of the chiefs, yeah. the Queen Mothers, it can and happen. all the institutions, we should be able to get there yeah. slowly. You know, you're, like you, you are a man of many parts. I'm still trying to, you know, figure you out <laughs> because there's that part of you that's into art. I really didn't even know that. Uh -huh. There's uh, the you that is consulting on architectural projects. There's the you who's an entrepreneur who has a cleaning and consulting company. There's even the you that worked in media yes. at some point was on TV as well. So when you were a young person, what profession did you want to do? I wanted to be a man of God. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the only yeah. thing that stood out for me is the, is the tense. Yeah. This is the wanted to. Is it too late? It is. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> well, I'm doing God's work. You're doing God's work now. I but why did you want to be a man of God? Apparently, in my whole life, you know, um, my, my mother always had a gift you know, from Divine Healers Church. Okay. You know, she could divine and she could prophesy. That's the same place that she got a prophecy about yes. her child. Yes, And then also she had a gift of healing. And I think that I had that transference. Oh. So uh, most times of my life, if you look at my life, even with the kind of musicians that I have produced in my life, the kind of music videos that I have produced in my life, yeah. they are mostly gospel. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I see. Um, you produce the musicians Yes, too. yes. So the, um, collaborations with Daughters, with um, Juliane Champon, with Pat and Tony. I've done videos, music videos, you know, um, edited videos, done movies. Wow. So we, we I, and then also, um, Icon Communications was um, the marketing, you know, structure for Millicom Ghana. Yeah. And L. Jones um, um, gave us a contract to promote Mobitel Star Call in Kumasi. Oh, back in the day. Back Star in the Call. Day. Trami Star Call. Yes. Mijina <laughs> um, um, Bontin. Say, you know, that sort of thing. So you were behind yes, that as yes. well? Yes. And I was given the whole of Ashanti region to promote Mobitel Star Call. You understand? That was, that was for me, was I was young. Mm. I was tunnel visioned. Mm. I was a senior executive in my business, Kida Productions. And I had arrived, you know, with all that. So, me as a person, I'm, I'm, I have had the exposure and the experience, mm. you understand what I mean, of what it takes to be in a media house, what it takes to market, what it takes to speak, you understand, and even speak on authority. <laughs> <laughs> a little bird told me that mm -hmm. your voice is on my airwaves. <laughs> oh, I will not go there. <laughs> <laughs> so you used to do voiceovers. I, I'm not going to specifically bring it out, but you used to do voiceovers as well. 
Yes, I, I used to do voiceovers. Um, you know, GBC, you know, Gamma, Gamma Studios, which is now TV3, used to be Gamma Studios. And there was a fine gentleman there called Bidiako. Mm. He trains voice, you know, for TV presenters and everything. So um, I had to study voice, you know, and um, in doing that, you you hear Adom FM 106.3. You <laughs> and hear that's your voice. Kasapa, you <laughs> hear in Shirai FM 104.5 and all those um, liners. You hear Ghana most beautiful, Ghana most strongest. There are companies like IK who bought my voice for the whole year. They used to fly me all around the place just to make, you know, adverts or voiceovers and all wow that. so uh, <laughs> you I have, have lived <laughs> i have <laughs> you today have you've caught me no i had to you, i had to you've caught me in a junction <laughs> i have to go back and play those uh, jingles on adum fm adum 106.3 yeah. and ishira fm yes 104.5 wow yes. beautiful <laughs> you've heard those jingles then you know that that's the voice of Gamanche. You didn't know this. I, I didn't know this totally. I mean, mm -hmm. but they are very iconic jingles that a lot of people have the recall for and all of that. Now, uh, back to what I w something that came to mind. Most part of your life was from the church. Mm -hmm. You just told me that you wanted to be a man of God someday. Yes. And most of your upbringing was from the church. I mean, your mom, your dad, we're all, you know, in the house of God, basically. Mm -hmm. But now you are the traditional leader of a community that really believes in, 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 in their culture, their traditions, which not, do not necessarily uh, conform with Christianity. There is some variance, isn't there? No. There's no variance. Tell me. Gang culture has always been a theocracy. Our belief in Bolomau comes from our attachment with Israel. We lived in Goshen, and when Israel left Goshen, we came down south to Ife. Mm -hmm. Even in Ife, though we served Odua in Ife, we still believed in Bolomau. And we followed the Neptune star and came to Middle Earth. Today, we are in Accra after our adventure in Ayawaso, the reign of the Aquamus in our lives. And now we've adopted Aquamu as a Tublohu, as part of our um, division. Now, Tublohu is a paramountcy under the Gamanche stool. So, our tradition as Gans is always being Hebrew, even the Homo War. The facts of us claiming and asking for a moment, a period of silence on ban of drumming, banning drumming and noise making, is all what precedes before the Passover feast in the Jewish religion in Hebrew. So we, we, we are a whole um, a, a generation or a chip of the ice block of Israel mm. and their culture, norms and their usages. When we evoke the Nye, we are evoking the now. The Nye Walomo, that's the cult of the now. You know, that is what is established. Everything that is practiced in Egypt is what is practiced in Naiwe. So the Tigari gods that we see amongst us now were an adoption, adoption from the Kwamu regiments and regime of Accra and our association with them. Mm. If you would know, most of our songs that we have are Akwamu songs or Akan songs, if you hear our Safo, Alalai, and all that, they are from that kind of association that we had with Akwamus and Achims. Mm. 
you know. And I think that they've now all become integral part of our traditional sect, you know, and that's basically where we are at that. So it's not at variance to um, the Christian culture. When I say that I wanted to be a man of God, it's because I wanted to be at the pulpit. Right. You know, but just at the pulpit, it was prophesied that I have not called you to my pulpit, but I have called you to be a Gideon and a Nehemiah to build the broken walls of Accra and restore it back to safety. And that was the orders that have been given. And that is what I am fulfilling. Mm -hmm. So it's not at variance with anything I believe in. But then, like wanting to be at a pulpit at that time, I had spent a lot of my life's work trying to live a holy life, trying to be a man of God. I was singing, and then I was invited by the late Archbishop Idahosa to sing at his 56th birthday. In Nigeria? In Nigeria, in Benin City. Wow. And he saw me and he said, bring this young man after I had finished singing. And he said, this boy will raise the dead. That's what he said? Yes. And from that day he said that, there was a whole new me. Because when he said, bring my horn, and he poured that oil on me, I changed completely. So I knew that in my life's work, mm. I was going to be a man of God because then I had so much. I had been able to gain that anointing, that, that, that premise, yeah. you know, to proclaim the gospel. But when he also said that a cry is dead and you will raise it, that was the meaning of that prophecy. It didn't mean that I was going to be at a pulpit, mm. but it meant that I was going to serve Gadangbe. Mm. It meant that I was going to change Gadangbe. It meant that I was going to change the narrative of Gadangbe. Mm. It meant that intanshi ni ga akoto ni it meant that intanshi ni ga fite ni intanshi na shigbeke kuyese ni intanshi ni aklo wo ni bi keje wadeni ni intanshi intanshi biko biko kasi beni ga chake. The guy face solo. Me big affair, big any your gash born. No, he might tell you a head basset and a mocker hale. Intention. Come Lalo Fam Lalo Baffy Kume. Come Mancha me Baffy Kume. Manya me Baffy Kume. As a watcher me Baffy Kume. Manya me. Well, why are you Baffy Kum? Who long my Baffy Kume? You will get Chucky Gadangby. Why are you so it shall be. Nikwe shishi no more be. It shall be. Na beo. She shall be. This an wafe kume. It shall be. This an wasmo wahi. It shall be. This an wamomo wahi. Ni wa trashin. Ni wa drink ya here. Ni wa be wahi. No ku kume pe. Akeshi. Yi no ya be kume. E wong mene awo woman cheme. Hello, to Kuno Traloy. The one that you know I be ne Mini was she okay, Hame. John Ruskin said something. He said, When we build, let us think that we build forever. Let it not be for the present delight alone. Let it not be for the present. Let it be work that our descendants will thank us for. As we lay stone on stone, let us know that a day is to come when these stones will be held sacred because we have touched them. Because you know, I be Tay, ning mene, won't do it. Mena me, ni won do mene ne. Mene ne ke te ne, ni woke fon shi ne. Building stone on stone. Ne ke mena me ne. Amba kwe, namba ke. Ake si energy 
Tony Kentucky Teco Chu Gamante Ibachu Kehaga Kedang Bife. I believe in it that see, this is what our fathers did for us. This is what our fathers did for us. If you like as a leader, one thing that you should understand is that if your governance is not of benefit to the people you govern or rule over, you should understand that it's superfluous. It's as well as it must not be there. Oh, hey, say now, Momo, don't care, ma. It was an Oyani Mukonkulaba. A low best, an Ochako Subang. We are losing our connection with the grassroots. We are losing our connection with our people. But the moment you lose a connection with your people, it means that you have lost your seat. We must regain connection with our people as a leader, as leadership of this state. Mm. I am ready to regain my connection with the people. Konami akuche ya mi, unani nye shikpon, unani police nye nse. Nimi ya ni nye akuchu ami, nimi ya manche manche ani kamenwe, nimi banhe shi ke hamo femo, fe nko aka ya suna ke bo ani ana. Na ya suna ke kra man. Wo bi antone wo mo mo femo. Mo femo aba shishi no mo, aka shi game ji wo e. Ga fomo bi ji wo. Ka dan be fomo bi ji wo. Because bang men were here, you were near what fear could make. One in a year, your little bank could make me a man came in G. Nekemo, Namojo Namojo, Nimojo. She mom, Kao no, ye me, no kesuma hale, no unless she No, I yossi, I can see. Kelle bo bear gun, bachaki. Netra he, na we basa basa basa. Netra he. Now you can care. Family value systems have broken. Be later don. Be che, lay be. Ne ka ye ken ya. Maybe wala chaki. Wasuke wa bang. Kunu wa wase kuki wa be na wase kwa fujuba. I'm here on a great mission. And I'm mandated by the authority of the gods of this land. My ancestors support me absolutely. That is why I'm Piasuma. And I'm telling them that gang will change whether they like it or not. Gang. Gang be Iwachaki. Something must change. And no Kwachaki. At all cost. I'm going to make sure that I go out of my way to make my presence known. Gabachaki. No feno bachaki. What's the first thing you want to see change? We have to unite first. And then there must be a change of mindset. Because you cannot live on an island. Even all the world's most powerful nations wants to join NATO. And they are given regulation and all that. You understand why they can't even join. Uh, people are coming together. We are dispersing. You understand what I mean? People are coming together corporately, you know, to create policy. And we want to live as islands. How can you cooperate or collaborate on anything meaningful for your people? Because it's about synergy. Yeah. And it works corporately. And. Uh, and I'm inspired by what, what you're saying. Um, it ties in with the mission and the prophecy that was given to you in that church. Yes. Even though at the time that I am sure Prophet E.S. Leader Hosa made this statement, you hadn't conceived the idea of becoming the king of the God state. Never. So at what point did that reality dawn on you that you could be the government. 
I entered into several churches and any time I was there, you know, there was always a prophecy about me. And at one, you know, whose church I will visit very soon. Um, well, I don't want to create a media frenzy about it, but this prophet just said that you are Gamanje. And then he spoke about what my mother had been through and all that. Without any foreknowledge? No. And I think that it's clear that I have the humility to take this seat and to run it better than anybody else. Yes. So why you? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't even know up to today. I think with um, the, the bit of background that we've learned today, why not? Yeah, I know that today I have been very re revealing. <laughs> yes. Is that the word? Well, I can see in Umbla Fotomobo. Oh. <laughs> uh, she, I think I can see um, today a lot of people will come to know who I am. Yes. What I am and where I'm going. And for us, it will make people appreciate you more. Because I, I am very inspired by your story and your things you've done, and even more by your vision for the gas state. Yes. The gas state must live at all costs. It must. The Dangbe must rise again. Yeah. Yeah. So prior to being the Gahmanche, you were a businessman. You had the flourishing business. Life was totally different uh, from what it is now. Uh, you didn't have somebody hold an umbrella over you and had wonderful ladies hold the smoke to ward off evil spirits. You had to fend for yourself against all the evil spirits. Yes. But now life has totally changed. Yes. Tell me about the change before and now. What it is like being the Gamache. The aspect of routine and a discipline. That there are things that you cannot do anymore. Like what? No, oh, you can be with a woman at certain days of the week. At Even least, your wife? Yes, three days of the week you cannot. Even your wife? Yes. Um, you cannot eat outside. You cannot. The days you can't be with your wife, are they specific days or they alternate? No, they are specific days. Which days are those? Oh, you cannot, you cannot be with a woman on your stool days. I have Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday as my stool days. Those are your stool days? Yes. Okay. So in a week, you have only four days. Only? <laughs> wow. So, uh, His Royal Majesty, uh, four days is not only, but uh, if you say so. Yeah. I'm just curious, though. Did you have to discuss this with your wife? And how does she feel about it? Ah, she, she's been quite understanding. So. Um. But apart from that, you know, um, there are a lot more things that you cannot do, especially during our rights, you know, banning, drumming, and noise making. Mm. You understand what I mean? You have to stay really chaste and pure, mm. and prayer, and supplication, you know, and make sure that uh, your ancestors hear, hear your cry and your prayer and your supplication. So basically, it's, it's a spiritual process. You can't live your life just anyhow, mm. anymore, you know. Uh, you lose your privacy immediately. Okay. Because you cannot go anywhere alone. You basically need an entourage of more than 10 people to be anywhere. Oh, wow. And you know, in Kumasi, we, we had to go with an entourage of 250 people. 250 people? Five buses. Wow. Yes. So it's not, um, it's not easy being king of the state. Uh, but my purpose is to serve, to serve the people of the Gan state, to, to serve Gadangbe. And I am committed to this call mm -hmm. to serve them even better. And I need their suggestions and their input. Yeah. You know, I keep forming teams and committees, you know, to sit on 
um, various events that we are we, we, we want to bring into the capital. Um, recently, we are talking to our investment partners. I'm going to be the new face of smart city development in the whole of Africa. Oh, okay. And um, fortunately, we are negotiating with government mm. on a few lands to be released to the government chain. This is tools. Okay. And we believe that um, once that is achieved, we would be in place to put up smart cities, especially in most of the, you know, um, land banks we have in Accra. Accra is congested. Yeah. The central business district is so congested that we need to move a spill mm. away from, 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 from where it is now. Currently. So you also say, uh, agree with the suggestion that we need to create another city probably a little bit further away that also has administrative centers and that can create a, a whole new city. Yes, the implementation of decentralization is of great concern and a matter of concern to me. Because why would we still entertain youth, you know, coming to Accra to see greener pastures? We have youth in Accra who need, you know, that same space who need the same amenities. But now, there's a whole scramble for that. Mm. The little amenities we have within our communities, you know, that's where we are at. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying that the implementation of a country's agenda of decentralization is weak, yeah. you know. And if there's anything that has to be done it must be given, you know, the fire that L it deserves. Yeah, L land administration in Accra mm -hmm. <laughs> is a big issue. Yes. Many people, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening now are dealing with litigation issues, largely mostly because so oh, one family has sold the land and, and another family is selling it and this and that and whatnot. As the government chair, what are you are you aware of this, and what are you doing about it? So right now, it started with the new Lands Act, which is gazetted and is in place. We have collaborated with the Stool Lands Administration, and because of that, we have, and soon to be launched, the new. Gamanche Land Secretariat. We believe that we'll be able to keep records, archive our matter, and be able to address some of these issues because most of these cases that we have in court are red judicata. Most of the cases have already been heard and educated. So but we need to have the evidence. People go to court for 30, 40 years, not even knowing that these matters have already been determined mm. in various levels of courts of law, even up to the Supreme Court level, mm. you understand. But I believe that with the forming of this trust from the Gamanche, Customary Land Secretariat, we'll be able to collaborate with all land secretaries in Accra and regularize the matter of land, guided by the new Land Act. I believe that when that is in place, we would see a light at the end of the tunnel regarding land administration, land tenant systems mm. in Accra. His Royal Majesty the Manche, King Taki Teku Churu II, my guest here on Personality Profile, what an amazing story he has, but there's more. I mentioned earlier that I saw billboards around town about this peace campaign that you're embarking on. Tell me about it and what role you want to play in helping Ghana go to the polls peacefully in December. Ghanaians are peaceful people. Ghanaians are a peace-loving people. There is no better place than Ghana 
you must invest in Ghana. I always tell my development partners because there's no place like Ghana. Our attitude, the persons that we are, we ensure peace at all costs. And one thing that we have to understand as I sit here is that we also are in a democratic dispensation. We know what democracy is. That is a unitary tool. That's what is regarded as. And that it becomes a platform of our virtues and our values attained. Now, to build the form work of our democracy is justice, freedom of rights, harmony, peace, and all that. And this is ensured by the executive arm of government, the legislative arm of government, and the judiciary. We come down to the fact that all this is conceived in a set, in a setup of our norms, tradition, and culture. And once we as citizens are able to attain this fate, then our democracy becomes meaningful. But the fact that there is free speech doesn't mean that you should have the kind of trend that we are having today. In GBC, we were taught that we entertain, we inform, and we educate. How do you educate a child when you are speaking on top of your voice things that will hurt and break a nation? We haven't seen war before. And I think that most of the people on our TV stations as anchors and everything like that, spewing garbage about people, denigrating people and all that, have not or were not born in 79. They didn't see the coups. They have not experienced war. They don't know what it tastes like. I tell you, hate speeches like this turned places like Rwanda into genocide zones atrocities that were caused, ethnic cleansing and all that, because of hate. If we cannot tolerate each other and still boast as peace-loving Ghanaians, if we cannot accommodate each other and still boast that we are patriotic, patriotic to our call, what does our pledge as a nation tell us? That we will sacrifice all the peace and take it for granted and not respect the elderly. Facebook, social media, there is an act 63. If you are a person, you are a person. You are a person. You are a person. You are We have lost every family value system in this country. The fabric of our society has become corrupt. When I was talking about the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. It is because they have a responsibility to the people who have put them there. That is why they must, and at all cost, do what? Listen. At least keep their promises. But now I think that Ghana has evolved from manifestos, honestly. Mm. <laughs> No. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And this goes to all the parties 
that I have seen become assume governments in this country. You understand what I mean? She not mean care Ameji. We need a national development agenda. Ni a to ma bejiano to short term, mid term, and long term. Ni party kokura beneke manifesto kumba. She ko ba obo ba nyemi. Ni bejiano to ni atashi na panhe na toe ona nicho oba yino ni manya ye here. It is anya ba aka educational system neke. Eka kusaba. Eko another party ba eka educational system eh three years. Meneba eka educational system four years. Eka ama mochu ko ya pram pram neke ko ma affordable buildings ni yo jeme eya musunsha. Tefi ote the public purse, the taxpayers' money. I commit to all to such projects. Me at the end of the day, I'm asking Keke. Me na fi o. I want me Kenya. Me, Chaji me. In Blabi e, in Blabi e, in fake politics. In ke politics best ani. She mean Kenya. I kesi. You have a responsibility to Ghanaians. Me for Gadangbe. Ke game. You have a social contract with us. How much does it take to put a borehole in Bukom? How much money does it take? And how much money does it take to buy a mono dua desk? Mono dua desk and put it in the classroom. No bana ni be a teson ta mono dua desk ko mese na nga exams. Min panya fai. Atunye man fe na don loy e wo nyeke na kan no akase whether you are the executive you are the legislator or you are the judiciary you are responsible to a people and also must be responsible for your actions when the regulator the ec is able to put her house in order. Right now, we know that there are several registrations going on. If people need more time to register, give them that time. Let them register. Nobody must be disenfranchised so that people would have misgivings. It's important that our regulators of media, of communication, our regulators of this year's election act properly and in proper manner because what i see in this year and the reason why i've started early that there must be peace at all costs there must be peace at all costs and we cannot take our peace for granted that's why when you come on the airwaves and you come on social media and you begin to say these hate speeches i'm against it right and i believe that these speeches and these things that people spew out of course there must be a law now I know there is a law on fake news and panic and all that I know that but let's implement it to the full capacity let us bring peace let us make sure as Ghanaians that we do not take our peace for granted because it's in this piece that we can have socioeconomic development and you and I can be safe. Awesome. As we wrap up, yes. I would want us to briefly talk about this year's Homo War celebrations. This year's Homo War will be the biggest and the best. It's been preceded by a number of activities, especially cleaning of Accra and making sure that um, our environments are cleaner and better. We have collaborated with the Ministry of Sanitation, Zoom Lion, the mayors, the mayor of Accra, the MMDAs, and the regional minister, the new regional minister, and the Minister of Interior to put Accra and make Accra work again, to make Accra clean again, to clean Accra before the Homo War. But this year's Homo War is bringing everybody on board because we need peace 
and we'll continue preaching about peace until we have this year's election. Cha no manyaba. Yao. His Royal Majesty, the King of the Land, the Gahmanche, King Takichuru II. I am Lexis Bill, and this has been Personality Profile.